What is up guys, Greedy Knight here talking about Charge Blade Math. I'll be going over damage output and functional skills for Charge Blade, reviewing why the progression sets invest in various skills at specific levels. Let's get into it. In order to calculate damage, you have to start with this quote unquote basic formula shown here. I'll be explaining each variable so don't worry. Let's use Fatalis Charge Blade as an example. Your displayed raw is divided by a weapon multiplier for Charge Blade, it ends up being 3.6. So your 1224 displayed raw is actually 340 true raw attack. For element you divide by 10, resulting in 15 true elements. If you played Monster Hunter GU or Raspberry, both of these games have your true raw as your displayed value. While Monster Hunter 4U and Monster Hunter Worldborn both have inflated values. The next variable is the crit modifier. Affinity is a percentage of both critical modifiers. The higher your affinity, the more often you crit, but it is capped at 100%. The default crit value is 1.25 of your raw damage, but with crit boost it goes up to 1.4. The default element crit value is 1.0, with element crit up it increases to 1.35 and with true element crit up it increases to 1.5. All of your cutting attacks are able to crit while attacks like foul burst are unable to crit. Sharpness is the next variable, providing a multiplier to both raw and element based on the level of sharpness of your weapon. Also it provides certain levels of mind's eye, allowing you to prevent bouncing by having higher tiers of sharpness. White and purple sharpness are the ideal sharpness levels since they provide a high raw and element boost along with mind's eye for most attacks. Just like with affinity, files ignore sharpness for calculation. The shield modifier refers to your red shield charge. By loading files into your shield you gain increased guarding power, unlock the SAD and CS moves as well as apply a damage buff to all of your axe mode attacks. This depends on your file types, power file will apply a raw modifier to axe attacks and power ticks, while power element file will apply a boost to element. The shield modifier does not apply to SAED file damage, but it does apply to element discharge file damage. The hit zone is the monster's defense, it reduces your raw and element damage through a percentage. For charge blade you only apply cutting and element damage. Power file damage ignores hit zones, scaling only with raw attack and artillery modifiers. Clutch claw increases the hit zone values when a part is tenderized, allowing you to output more damage. Weakness exploit requires a hit zone of 45 to proc the initial affinity boost and a part to be tenderized to apply the secondary affinity boost. Motion values are a percentage of your raw attack. On the element side, multipliers scale your element damage up or down. Your file type applies differing multipliers to your raw and element damage. Power file increases raw attack. Power element file increases element for the shield charge modifier, axe attacks, and savage axe ticks. You want to prioritize raw attack for power file and element for element file regardless of set. The SAD consists of the 3 axe hits and the 6 files. To simplify the math, we are only looking at the file damage since they cannot crit and do not factor in sharpness. It makes the SAD the easiest move to calculate for charge blade by plugging in the raw attack and artillery modifier or the element and elemental hit zone. You assume you land all files on a given hit zone for maximum damage. Raw attack skills like attack up only have 50% effectiveness for the calculation so the typical agitator 7 plus attack 4 would normally apply 40 for the other attacks and 20 for the SAED. The ED2 is a bit more complicated because it is a 5 part move. Here is the equation for the ED2 plus savage axe combo, I call it the double chop. Each part of the double chop has a raw and element component with the file burst applying the respective file damage. The savage axe tick count is based on contact duration with the monster. On average you can land 3 on most hit zones. So this results in the 2 swings of the ED2, the 6 savage axe ticks both with raw and element values and the 2 raw only or element only file bursts. You use these moves as the benchmark for set building because they output the most damage before applying any skills. If we are measuring the ceiling of charge blade by applying skill boosts, the floor should raise as well. You only need exact calculations for other moves if you are time attacking and calculating for 
various damage thresholds to trip the monster. Functional skills are core to elevating your charge blade gameplay. While damage is important for killing the monster faster, skills like load shells, guard up, and focus are commonly used for charge blade throughout the series as a quote unquote skill text. These skills improve charge blade's ability to function against all monsters and are quote unquote required for optimal gameplay. As a weapon with multiple options, functional skills just change up what options you have in any given situation. Load Shells is a high priority skill for Charge Blade. For 1 point, you get a 6 file for stronger SADs, longer Savage Axe time, and longer Shield Charge. On endgame sets, SAD files hit for 100 plus damage, and gaining a 6 file is a free 100 plus damage boost. For Element File, they hit for 200 plus on good matchups, so this is the largest damage boost you can gain from 1 point of skill investment. Savage Axe consumes a file every 11 seconds, resulting in 66 seconds of Savage Axe time, assuming you do not burn a file for SADs and you have load shells equipped. Lastly, the shield charge applies 30 seconds per file, extending red shield charge by 30 seconds with that 6 file. You spend less time recharging your shield, resulting in more time dumping files and chopping the monster. Due to its value and early availability, load shells is present on every build for charge blade. Guard is the next skill. To calculate whether you can guard a move, you compare the power of a move to your guarding ability. Charge Blade has 15 guarding ability by default, with 25 and 35 being provided by a guard point and red shield charge plus guard point. Guard increases your guarding ability by 10 on the odd levels and reduces your stamina consumption on the even levels. In response to an attack, you have a light, medium, and heavy knockback. If the difference between the power and your guarding ability is within these ranges, you will fall under the respective knockback. Less than 10 for light knockback, between 10 and 20 for medium, and greater than 20 for heavy. The light and medium knockbacks allow you to input your guard point follow up albeit with differing timings, stamina consumption, and sharpness consumption. The heavy knockback reaction will prevent you from following up entirely, consume 10 units of sharpness, and a massive chunk of your stamina bar. So you want to avoid heavy knockback by investing in 3 or more levels of guard. However, since the maximum amount of guard you can get on charge blade is 65, any move with 85 or more power will result in heavy knockback. Light knockback negates all stamina consumption and chip damage, medium knockback applies 10% chip damage, while heavy knockback applies 20% chip damage. Guard up is the next skill and its main value is that you don't cart against moves that would otherwise cart you. Here is the guard up chart for Monster Hunter World. These are the moves that are normally unguardable like Rajang's Beam and Kirin's Lightning in the absence of guard up. For one point of investment, it allows you to trivialize certain monsters that otherwise would have been a nuisance or a bad matchup. However, there are moves that are entirely unblockable regardless of guard up. These are moves that you have to dodge instead of guard. A better alternative is one level of evade extender allowing you to physically move out of range of an attack so you can bypass the guard point stalling your morph to axe, the knockback, and the sharpness consumption. Since there is a lack of mobility options for charge blade in Monster Hunter World, Evade Extender doubles as a gap closer against the very mobile endgame of Iceborne. The increased evasion length allows you to stick to the monster and get to slashing that much sooner, resulting in a DPS increase, albeit indirectly. Savage Axe savers every second of engagement, so evading allows you to stick to the monster or disengage from a monster's attacks as needed. Focus is the last functional skill. Looking at each of the sword and shield attacks in the motion value chart, the energy generated is listed. The weak single hit moves are worth 3 energy. Guarding attacks is not listed, but it is also 3 energy. Most moves that end in a guard point are worth 9 energy. The shield thrust is worth 1 energy per hit for a total of 2 energy and charge slash has 2 hits with the values of 18 and 9 energy. The yellow energy threshold is 30 and the red energy threshold is 45. Every single good energy combo will use the charge slash as part of the combo because it is 27 energy in total. This is where focus and the following chart comes in. It not only increases your energy generated per hit, it also lowers the threshold by the 5, 10, or 15% advertised by the skill. 
To see if focus is worth it, you have to compare it to the default combo which is a charge slash into side hop into charge slash combo. This gets you 54 energy well over the needed 45. Focus is used to change your combo with the intention to make it more optimal than two charge slashes. The new combo is any sword and shield attack into charge slash into any sword and shield attack. Following the chart, there is no change until level 3 where you reach the 38 threshold with 39 energy. The reason the progression guides sparingly use focus is because it is a side grade. You are changing up the combo rather than optimizing it. You perform 4 hits with both combos and they have comparable frame data. For 3 points of investment, there are better skills to spend your slots on. When picking which skills are chosen for damage output, the golden rule is consistency over individual boosts. If you can meet the condition of the damage boost a majority of the time, it is a good damage skill. On the flip side, if a skill is inconsistent with a specific condition for activation, it is generally speaking a bad damage skill. The reason we want to categorize skills as good and bad is because space on all sets is limited. Fatalis is the peak of the game and it has limitations, so you want to prioritize the quote unquote best skills for your set. SAD concentrates on attack and artillery or element because file damage scales with the respective damage boost. Savage X focuses on all types of damage because the double chop factors in raw attack, crit, element, and sharpness. Agitator, Attack Up, and Element Up are the default skills because they are consistent boosts in Monster Hunter World. Attack Up and Element Up are flat boosts that are always active so you want to include them on a set whenever possible. Attack Up is run at level 4 to benefit from the 5 affinity with additional investment depending on space on the set. Element is run at level 6 because it is the only slottable element boost skill in the game. Unless you are running armor lock skills, it is the only way to maximize your element damage. Agitator is normally designated as an inconsistent skill, however due to the clutch claw and slapping mechanic, you can force the monster to enrage and you get a wall bang to boot. Whenever you get the notification Agitator has worn off, you can wall bang it again to activate it again, making the skill 100% consistent in specifically Monster Hunter World. Offensive Guard is a solid skill for Charge Blade. When you time your guard or guard point, you can proc the percentage based raw attack boost. It lasts for 15 seconds allowing you to get a few attacks in and then you can refresh it with another guard or guard point. It promotes a calculated way to play charge blade, you only have 15 seconds to make use of this buff so the ideal strategy is to set up your files and fish for a guard point, then morph to axe mode to dump your damage options through the SAD or savage axe chops. Once the buff wears off or you run low on files, you reset to sword and shield mode. The main con for this skill is that you have to wait for a monster's attack to guard point in order to proc the boost. So in situations where the monster is down, this buff either is active before the monster trips or you miss out on the raw attack boost entirely. The last two skills are Furor and Peak Performance. The health based attack boosts are not consistent until endgame. Peak performance pairs with the health augment since it can regenerate you to full health, fulfilling the condition for the attack boost. It works against true Dragon Vein Awakening because it constantly drops you below full health so you must use a Fatalis armor set, even with element weapons. In contrast, Furor pairs well with Safi Jiva's true Dragon Vein Awakening with the constant red health, resulting in the guaranteed attack buff. However, it does proactively work against the health augment, so you must change your augment to accommodate Furor. It increases the risk associated with true Dragon Vein Awakening and its input based life drain. Outside of these two set combos, peak performance and Furor are not good skills, especially for Charge Blade. Affinity is a percentage of the crit boost and element crit boost modifiers. By reaching 100% affinity, you will reap the 40% raw increase and the 35% element increase. Weakness exploit with agitator and attack up form the affinity core. Assuming you tenderize the hit zone, weakness exploit 3 provides 50 affinity on a weak spot, while the combo of agitator 7 and attack up 4 provide 20 affinity. Paired with the Kajar weapons, you get 85 to 90 affinity. For weapons with 0 affinity, you do need to invest in Crit Eye or Max Might to round off your affinity to 100%. 
Crit Eye is a small but flat boost, while Max Might is an evasionless flat boost. Since Charge Blade is a side hopping menace in World, Crit Eye will be the consistent pick while Max Might is the restrictive but slot friendly skill. Razor Sharp and True Razor Sharp are used to extend the amount of white slash purple sharpness hits you have. Razor Sharp negates sharpness consumption 50% of the time, while True Razor Sharp negates it 70% of the time. Statistically, this doubles and triples your sharpness bar respectively. Weapons with 40 units of white sharpness now have 80 units of sharpness using Razor Sharp and 120 using True Razor Sharp. With access to the Razor Sharp Charm and Fatalis 4 piece set, this is the sensible sharpness maintenance skill in endgame. Master's Touch is the only contender for Razor Sharp, it negates sharpness consumption whenever you crit. A simple condition to meet on paper especially since endgame sets hover at the 90 affinity range. However, it requires you to rent Teostra pieces to obtain. It is a redundant skill when you have access to the Fatalis set. And there are several meta weapons with long sharpness bars, defeating the purpose of complete sharpness negation. Due to these factors, Razor Sharp and True Razor Sharp are better skills for Charge Blade. A quick side note, Handicraft is used in conjunction with Razor Sharp and True Razor Sharp on certain weapons. With these skills, each level of Handicraft does double or triple, so one point of investment would be 20 units and 30 units respectively for Razor Sharp and True Razor Sharp. Artillery is an odd case for Charge Blade. While it applies a consistent boost for files, the main issue is that it only applies to power file damage and the boost is percentage based. It outputs 150% of your file damage. For SAD, 100 file damage results in a 300 damage boost through load shells investment and the 5 levels of artillery. For Savage Axe, your average file damage hovers around 30 to 40. A 50% increase results in a net 30 to 40 damage per double chop for 5 points of investment. It is one of the worst return on investments for Savage Axe, so you cut it for the playstyle, only running it for SAED. I covered this in a separate video, but for augments and custom upgrades, you want to invest in attack for power file and element for power element file. The health augment has high value because it reduces your time spent healing up back to full. Since Charge Blade has a lengthy sheathing animation, you skip that by playing smart and aggressively, resulting in more overall damage regardless of what your numbers are. This results in 3 points for the health augment and 3 points for the attack up or element augments. These are treated as true raw and true element boosts, so they are not cut by 50% on the SAED. Like if this video was useful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more breakdowns like this. Comment your thoughts down below, that's all I got for this one, Greedy Knight, signing out.